Oh. Okay. So, um, if we have more than one resistor in a line, we call that series. Okay, we're already kind of familiar with series in parallel. Remember, for capacitors, we add the capacitance of parallel capacitors, just add it, and for series capacitors, it's inverse. Fun fact, don't get confused, resistors work just the opposite, okay? But for sort of the same reasons. So, what has to be the same? Oh my god. Don't die. Yeah, you're gonna need some essential oils. <laughs> <laughs> I have the flavor. What has to be the same? Essential oils and anti vaxxers? You can't take this class anymore. <laughs> I am fully vaccinated. Oh, oh, As are all my children. Anti vaccines. <laughs> right, you don't need vaccines, you can just yeah, rub oil yeah. on yourself. <laughs> <laughs> You'll be so greasy, no one will come near you. And then you can't get sick. <coughs> okay. What's the same through all of these? Current. Current, right? If you're in series, that means you have the same current through everything because current is the same until it crosses a junction. Do you see any junctions here? No. Nope. 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 Okay, so same current. So equivalent resistance. Then you just add up the resistances, okay? So current in each resistor in series is the same. And remember, when we did the one for the capacitor, the equation was C is equal to Q over V, and those are the variables we are dealing with. Guess what it is for resistors? No. Which equation? Ohm's law. Okay, so we're always wondering what's the resistance, what's the current, what's the voltage, okay? So current is all the same, but the resistances are different. What do we think about voltage? Same or different? Different. Different. Okay. So voltages each of each is different. If you add resistors, that increases your total resistance. If they're in series. Okay. Here's the formal math. Um, it's a summation. We'll be getting used to those now. Okay. So let's try an example. Three. Okay. Okay. So we want to know the current through each resistor, and because we know this is a series circuit, we know that the current should be the same through each resistor because this is an entire loop, and this means that the current goes all the way through. So the first thing we want to do is sum up all our resistors to get an equivalent resistance so that we can actually figure out what the current is. Um, here it's nice because since this is in series, we know we can just sum up the values. So 15 plus 4 plus 8, this is going to give us an equivalent resistance of 27 ohms. Then to find the current, we use Ohm's law. Um, Ohm's law is just delta V equals IR. We're going to solve this for current, so delta V over R, and then plug in our values. So that's going to be uh, 9 volts divided by 27 ohms, and that's going to give us about one-third of an amp, which is about 0.33 amps if you want to do it in decimal, but it's fine to leave it as a fraction too. Um, Okay, so we made a little chart so that we can actually fill out all the currents, and we know since this is a series circuit that the current should be the same through all of these resistors, okay? And so we can just fill those into the chart. We know it's a third of an amp, or 0.33 amps, for all of the resistors. Then we're going to have to figure out how to get the voltage, and once again we're going to use Ohm's law to do that. So we plug in V equals IR, but we're going to do it individually for each resistor. So for the 15 ohm resistor, we want to use the 15 ohm resistance, but of course since the current's the same through all of them, that's going to be the current of one third amp. So one third amp times 15 ohms, like there's our 15 ohms. One third amp times 15 ohms is going to give us five volts. And here we're filling it out just so we have it. So one third times 15, that's five volts. Okay, we can put that in our chart. 
Then we go on to our next resistor, which is the 4 ohm resistor. And once again, we use Ohm's law. So we use delta V equals IR, but now our delta V is for the 4 ohm resistor, and our resistance is 4 ohms. So 1 third times 4 ohms gives us 4 thirds volts. And we'll put that in the chart. And last but not least, we have our 8 ohm resistor. So we use Ohm's law for this particular resistor. Um, that's going to be 1 third amp times 8 ohms, which is going to give us uh, a total of 8 thirds volts. You can do this in decimal too, but it's fine to just leave it as a fraction. And now we have all of our voltages. Now it's important to remember that when you add up all of these voltages, 5 plus 4 thirds plus 8 thirds, you should get the total voltage because of loop law. So we know if we do 9 volts, then we should drop 5 volts over the 15 ohm resistor, 4 volts, sorry, 4 thirds of a volt over the 4 ohm resistor, and 8 thirds of a volt over the 8 ohm resistor to give us a total of 0. So 9 minus 9 should give us 0. That means loop law is still working. So the other thing we want to worry about is the power. Now the power is equal to the current times the change in voltage. Um, so in order to calculate the power for each individual resistor, we can go across. But for the battery, we just use the total current and the total voltage across the battery. So that gives us 3 watts. Now we can do this for each individual uh, resistor by just multiplying the current times the voltage for that resistor. So if we just multiply the current times the voltage for the first resistor, we end up with 5 thirds. And we can write that in our chart. And that's in watts, because power is in watts. And we can do this for our other two resistors by just multiplying across. So that's going to give us 4 ninths and also 8 ninths down in the bottom. Now if you add all of these together, 5 thirds plus 4 ninths plus 8 ninths, that should give you 3 watts. So we'll practice doing some fractions here. Um, 5 thirds is the same as 15 ninths. We just multiply the top and bottom by 3. We add up all these numerators. So 5 plus 4 is 19 plus 8 is 27. We end up with 27 ninths and that is 3 watts like we expected. So we are getting the amount of power we were expecting as we add up all of the power in this column. Also if we add up all our voltages we get what, what the total should be and then we know because this is in series all of the currents should be the same. Alright, thanks for watching. Parallel. All right. What's the same when things are in parallel? Voltage. Okay, so how do you think we add these? One over R, yes, inverse. Okay, so the voltage across each is the same. The current through each one can be different. Okay, and adding resistors in parallel gives you a lower equivalent resistance because whenever you add an inverse, things get smaller. If you add regular, things get bigger. Okay, formal statement in terms of summation looks like this. Okay, so once again, we're going to have this chart because we're still using the same three resistors, a 9-volt battery, and now we're just figuring out the potential current and power dissipated by each resistor, and then we'll add that up to get the total power. So we'll start by, once again, adding up the resistors so we can get an equivalent resistance. So in this case, equivalent resistance, since we're in parallel, means we have to add in inverse. So this is 1 over 15 ohms plus 1 over 4 ohms plus 1 over 8 ohms, all to the inverse. This gives us 2.3 ohms total. So if we rewrite our circuit, that's 9 volts, 
and 2.3 ohms. All right, and once again, we know that the current is going this way because of the direction of the battery. Now calculating the current in this case isn't going to be as useful because the current that we're going to calculate from this circuit is only going to be good from about here to about this first junction. Okay, And then we're going to find that it splits off so that we have different currents through each resistor. And because of that, because this is all considered one junction where it splits, we're going to have to calculate different currents for each resistor. But the thing we know is the same for each resistor, what's that going to be? Well, these things are all in parallel, so the thing that's going to stay the same oops, don't want to cross it out, is the battery. So all of these are 9 volts. Okay. So the first thing we're going to do is find our total current, which is sort of useful. So total current comes from delta V equals IR, just like always, and I is going to be equal to delta V over R. So this is our total current. This is going to be 9 volts divided by 2.3 ohms, which gives us 4 amps. Well, that means our total here should be 4 amps because we're just going to add up all these currents because remember it's loop law and junction law. Uh, junction law tells us current in is going to be equal to these three currents out. All right. So we're going to find our first current, which will be the blue one, through the 15 ohm resistor. We'll use, oops, I 15 ohms is going to be delta V over R. So that's going to be 9 volts over 15 ohms. So that'll give us 0 0.6 amps. Then we have our next resistor, which is our 4 ohm resistor. So I for the 4 ohm resistor is delta V over R for that resistor, and that's 9 volts over 4 ohms. So that's going to give us 2.3 amps. Last but not least, we have the 8 ohm resistor. So the current through our 8 ohm resistor, that's going to be delta V over R which is 9 volts over 8 ohms, which gives us 1.1 amps. Okay, so we add all these up, and we have 1.1 plus 2.3, that gives us 3.4, plus 0.6 gives us, hey, look, it's 4 amps, and we know that this is a good total and it worked. All right, once again, we know delta V is nine volts across everything, and then we can also check out our power. Now, just like before, power is equal to I delta V. Power for the whole thing, so power through the battery, this is the power that's coming out of the battery, is four amps, that's the current going through the battery, times the voltage of the battery, nine volts. So this is gonna give us um, 36 watts. So we know when we add all this stuff up, we should get 36 watts. So we know that we're just going to have to go across like this to get the power because we're multiplying I times V. So 9.9 .9 watts. Um, this is going to be 20.7 watts. And this is going to be 3.6 watts. Now when you add all these up, they give you about 36 watts, give or take, uh, you know, a decimal because of sig figs. So that means that this works out, and you can see the power dissipated by each resistor is bigger than it was in the last one, and also the total power is bigger than it was in the last one. So 
look, we have a nine volt battery and the same resistors, but we're able to draw a ton more power from this configuration because we have in this configuration a much smaller resistance. Therefore, much more current flows out all at once and we're getting more power. Now you're gonna say, well, this battery is the same as the battery in the previous problem. Um, the thing that happens here is your battery dies sooner. Okay, so there's only so much energy a battery can actually put out. So in this configuration, even though we have more current, more power, and the same resistors and batteries, the battery is going to be the one that gives out first. So here we have one light bulb connected to a battery and we want to figure out what happens if we take this identical situation but then we add one more identical light bulb. So we're going to assume all light bulbs have resistance R. And the batteries both have voltage V. Okay, and so in this first situation, our total current is just comes from V equals IR. That's not too big of a deal. Um, but the things we want to talk about are our equivalent. Um, I total, so that's going to be the current coming out of the battery, the brightness, and the power dissipated. Okay, so looking at this, well, first off, we know how to add up resistors in parallel, right? So if this is R and this is R, R equivalent is going to be. 1 over R plus 1 over R inverse, which is going to be 1 half R. So this is going to be smaller than R. All right. The current, it turns out, because we have the same voltage across each resistor, meaning if this is 9 volts here, this is 9 volts here, and this is 9 volts here, just like if this is 9 volts, this is 9 volts. That means that we're going to have each each resistor is still going to have the same voltage across it. 
and because it has the same resistance, they all should have the same current. So current total here is I, but current total here is 2I, because you have to, this current has to split and be I through here and I through here. Now, if, it's, if that's true, then from junction law, we know we have to start with 2I, so you can split and still get I. So this is 2I, and that means the total current gets larger. The brightness, however, should stay the same because this bulb, this bulb, and this bulb all have the same current running through them, even though this total circuit has more current than this total circuit. So this should be the same. Total power just comes from I delta V. Well, delta V stays the same for both circuits, but we know current doubles. So that's just going to be 2 times power from your original circuit, so this gets larger. Okay, thanks for watching. All right, so let's find some equivalent resistances. And the main strategy here is always add up the stuff that is most obviously in series or parallel first. So first we're going to just label some stuff. R1, R2, R3, and R4. Then we'll start by looking for the thing that is most obviously in parallel. Um, so in this case, that's going to be these two. So we're going to write this out and redraw the circuit. So we're going to call our equivalent resistance R34. That's going to be 1 over R3 plus 1 over R4 inverse. Um, that's going to be equal to 1 over 90 plus 1 over 45 inverse, which gives us 30 ohms. So we redraw our circuit. This is R1. This is now R34, which is 30 ohms. This is 10 ohms still. And this is R2, which is 25 ohms. So our next thing that we want to do is add up these two, which are fairly obviously in series. So we'll bring this down here. And you can see if it's in series, we'll call this R134, which is going to be equal to R1 plus R34. So that's 10 ohms plus 30 ohms, which is equal to 40 ohms. So we redraw the circuit. Now when you get better at this, you don't have to redraw the circuit, but it's good practice right now. Um, so this is our R134, which is equal to 40 ohms. And this is our R2, which is equal to 25 ohms still. So now we just have these last two, which look like they're in parallel. Let's see, so we want to preserve the pink. So that's pink. And now we have the last two, which are in parallel. Okay, so bring this over here. We're going to add up to one equivalent resistor, and to get this one equivalent resistor, we just have to add 1 over R134 plus 1 over R2 inverse, because these are in parallel. Um, so that's going to be 
1 over 40 ohms plus 1 over 25 ohms inverse, which is going to give us 15.4 ohms. And that is our final answer. This guy is 15.4 ohms. That is our equivalent resistance. No warm ups. So, um, we just want to know so, what happens to the brightness of the bulbs? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, what happens to the bulbs? They get dimmer. They get dimmer. Which ones? A and B, because they're already turned on. And then you can okay, so, so what does this look like before we flip the switch? A and B. This bulb. And this bulb, and are they the same brightness or different brightnesses? Same. 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 Okay. So this one and this one. Okay. Well, this the same brightness. Okay. Once we add this bulb, though, what happens to the brightnesses? Like, which is that? Is one of these brighter than the others? <coughs> a. a. Why is A brighter? Closer to the battery. Before the junction. Before the junction. So before the current splits. Okay? So if this is a particular brightness, how bright should this be relative to that one? Same with that. Oh. Uh, uh, half, right? Are these the same brightness? Yes. Yes, yeah. yes, because these are the same resistance, so the current splits in half. Okay? So these each get half the current. These will both be this kind of bright, and these, this one will be a different brightness. Because this one gets all the current, these each get half the current that that one gets. What happens to the total current? So what was the resistance before? We have two R's in series. So what do you do with those? R plus R. So you start with two R. What about now? What's the equivalent resistance of this thing? R. These give you one half R. Yeah. Okay, when you add them together, because you add them inverse. This is R. So this becomes 1.5 R. What does that mean about the current? Because this battery is still the same. Does it get bigger or smaller? <coughs> smaller. Smaller. Well, it's less resistance. It's bigger. Oh, no. It's better. Yeah, you do. Yeah. So this yeah, goes yeah, down, yeah. this stays the same, that means oh, the current be. goes up. Okay. So is this really bulb brighter or dimmer than it was before? It's brighter, right? It has more current going through it than the original configuration. Okay. These will still be dimmer than before, but they will still be getting a slight, like the total circuit gets more current. Okay. All right. So that part's, a, it's obvious that like, this will be brighter than these. This part's a little bit more subtle. You have to think about what happens to the equivalent resistance and then what happens to the current based on Ohm's law. Okay, so here's our steps to analyzing a circuit. It's sort of a general approach to any circuit diagram type problem, okay? So first off, Draw the picture. Make sure it's big enough that you can label it and see what the hell's going on. Make sure it's simple enough that you're not totally confused by where the junctions are, okay? So if the drawing that you get is too small or too complicated, redraw it and make it understandable to you, okay? Then you want to combine as many resistors as you can. And what that means is if there are things, the resistors in series are parallel, right? that don't have anything in between them, you can just add them up as inverse or whatever, depending on their configuration, okay? Then, after you've done that, label all the different currents in each branch. So anytime there's a junction and you branch off into different parts of the circuit, make sure each of those has its own current, make sure you know which direction that current is going. It doesn't have to be correct, remember, you just have to label a direction that makes the most sense to you. Right? It doesn't even have to make sense. It just has to be consistent. And then you use loop law, junction law, the Kirchhoff's laws, and Ohm's law to solve for all your currents and voltages or whatever the problem's asking for. And then you want to work backwards to get this, like if you, if you added up resistors and you need, you need a current to one of those resistors, you can work backwards to get there. OK? 
Okay. Now this is a general approach. As you'll notice when you're doing the homework, different problems ask for different things. You don't always have to go through this whole process to get to the answer that you need. But these are the tools you have available to you to solve these problems. Okay. So we're going to try a couple of relatively simple examples. Um, and then the homework has quite a few opportunities to test this theory out. Okay. Yay. All right. So, let's try this out. Okay. All right. So, the first thing you do when you see just a lot of resistors is try to combine as many as possible. So, we'll start by combining these two. So, we combine these two, and then we have to redraw the circuit. Now remember, when you get better at this, you don't always have to redraw the circuits, but this is a good practice for right now because we're all new at this. So um, here we still have our 6 ohm. Here's our battery. Here's our 15 ohm. And now this will be our new... Remember, these are in series, so it's 6 plus 4, this is 10 ohms. All right. 15 ohms, 24 volts. Okay. So that's the first combination. The next one we can combine, probably 15 and 10. Okay, because you'll notice you can't add anything to this 6 ohm resistor because it's next to the battery. So anything you do, you have the battery is in the way and you can't add the battery as a resistor. So here we're going to go over here. Now we have 6 ohms and our new combined. And this one we have to do. Um, 1 over 15 ohms plus 1 over 10 ohms inverse is equal to um, 6 ohms. Okay, so this is our new combined 6 ohm resistor. This is the math we needed to do it. And now we want to combine our last two resistors, which is this 6 ohm and this 6 ohm, so that we end up with just a resistor, and these are in series, so this is a 12 ohm resistor, 24 volt battery. Okay. So that's how we get the full equivalent resistance. Our equivalent resistance is 12. Um, now we want to figure out the current through and potential difference across each resistor. And to do that, we're pretty much going to go backwards. So we'll start by figuring out the current. And that's going to be the current through this whole thing. So we want to figure out the current total is going to be delta V over R. This just comes from V over IR. So this is going to be 24 volts over 12 ohms. So that's going to give us 2 amps. So we have 2 amps. Now, this is the same current through here. because we're still in series. So this is still two amps, so we know we have two amps here and two amps here. But because we don't know the voltage now, because these resistors have split from the equivalent, we can use this to find the voltage, okay? So we're gonna figure out the voltage here. Um, and remember, voltage, equal to IR. So 
we have a current, we have a resistance, we can easily figure out the voltage. And the voltage is going to be 12 volts here and 12 volts here because 2 times 6 is 12 and 2 times 6 is 12. All right. And this makes sense because 12 volts plus 12 volts is equal to 24 volts. Then we're going, so we're still going backwards. So we'll go back to this one. All right. Well, we noticed this 6 ohm resistor has been split up again into the 15 and the 10. So we can bring back the 12 volts. All right, so 12 volts, 12 volts. This is still 12 volts as well. Um, this one is still 2 amps because remember, this current is the same from here to here, but then you hit this junction over here. And so we can expect different currents from here to here and all through here. Okay, so that's a split current, but we kept, remember we kept this voltage, all right? So if we wanna find our new currents, we just use delta V equals IR and current is delta V over R. So here, delta V over R is going to be 12 divided by 10. So that's going to give us 1.2 amps. Okay, that's this current through this branch of the circuit. Then we also have 12 divided by five, um, and that's gonna give us 0.8, oh not five, 15, 12 divided by 15. So that's gonna give us 0.8 amps. Okay. So now we know all of these, but we still have to split up this last resistor. So we go over here. This is 12 volts. This is 12 volts still because these haven't been split up more. Um, we still have two amps. This is 0 0.8 amps. We're just bringing these over from the previous one. And because this yellow one is split, we know this is still all the same current from here all the way back to this junction. So this current is going to be oops, um, 1.2 amps, 1.2 amps. And then what we have to calculate is the voltage. So this voltage is going to be 12, is not going to be 12 volts because we know that the voltage is going to be equal to IR. So this is going to give us a voltage of 7.2, and this is going to give us a voltage of 4.8. Um, because we know we just have to use delta V equals IR again. So 4 times 1.2 is 4.8. 1.2 times 6 is 7.2. So you can still see as we go back, here's our three different currents. You can see they all branch at these junctions. Okay. So anything on this branch, this yellow branch, has a current of 1.2. Anything on the red branch has a current of 0.8. And anything on the orange branch has a current of 2. If you look at junction law, you can see at this junction, 2 amps is, sorry, is what's going in. That's going to be equal to 1.2 plus 0 
amps, which is equal to 2 amps. So 1.2 plus 0.8, that gives us 2. As for these voltages, right, we have to go through loop law. So anything here, this plus this, has to be equal to 12. And you can see 4.8 plus 7.2, that does give you 12. So all of this works out, and now we have the current and potential difference across each resistor. Let's talk about energy. So what's, how do we find power? Current times the potential, right? Current times voltage. Power is current times voltage. How does power relate to energy? What are the units of power? Watts. Watts, Watts which are watt. joules per second, right? So that is energy divided by time. So how do we get energy back? We multiply by time, okay? So here's our power dissipated by our resistor. Here's the time during which current is flowing. This is our total energy, okay? Now, what, what are the units of energy? Joules. What are the units of energy you find on your electric bill? Kilowatts. Not kilowatts, because that's power. Kilowatt hours. Kilowatt hours. Okay. Now, why do you think we use that unit? It's a weird unit. It's actually just multiplied units. It's pretty easy to figure out, right, what that means in a physical way, because that's how many kilowatt hours you're using, okay? So you're just multiplying it by hours. Now, having things in terms of seconds is useful from a physics perspective, but if you're talking about turning on a light bulb, you're not going to turn on your light bulb for 10 seconds, okay? It's going to be on for probably on the order of hours. If you're doing laundry or washing dishes, those are things that use power on the order of hours. So kilowatt hours is a convenience unit that helps us calculate in a more logical way how our, what our power use is. Okay, and so you can you can read that off your meter. Some meters are more um, difficult to read Did than you? others, but That's someone true. can read this. And uh, so let's let's figure this out. Now remember, in a household circuit, everything's pretty much considered a resistor. Okay, if you have a dryer, that's a resistor. And if you like, here's a fun field trip project. If you go to Home Depot and look at the washers and dryers, they have the resistance and power rating on them. So you can actually calculate the amount of energy it will use. So when it tells you like this one will save you $20 a year if you run this many loads of laundry, that is math that you guys can totally do. It's not even a hard problem. Like if you saw that on a test, you'd be like, this is an easy test question, okay? So when you actually buy appliances, you can calculate the energy use of those appliances because if you know the resistance, you can calculate the power. And if you know the power, you know how much energy it will use over time. Okay? And so if you know how long a wash cycle is and you know it's going to have this resistance and this current, you can calculate the power, you can calculate how much it's going to cost you if you know what you pay per kilowatt hour. Anybody know what we pay per kilowatt hour? It's like 19. Point eight, something like that. Sense? Yeah. Yeah. Like nineteen point eight. Well, it depends on where you where you live. Yeah, yeah, but, yeah, yeah, yeah. And there's also <coughs> tiers, right? So in the first tier, like the first amount of energy you use, it's about twenty cents per kilowatt hour. And then if you use too much energy, then you pay like twenty five cents per kilowatt hour for like the next block of time. And then you pay like up to forty five cents in tier four. So let's talk about grounding.